Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. More Breeders' Cup coverage. Another one of the fan favorite shows, Brian, with our well, I hope so, Matt. We, we got to give them what they want. Last week, uh, we did our 14 most likely winners, each of us, for the 14 races in the Breeders' Cup. Coming up now, just over two weeks at Santa Anita. Matt, today we go long shots. We're looking for some value here. So we're going to talk about our top value, our top long shot in each of the 14 races. Ready to roll? Absolutely. Let's do it. We'll start again with the Breeders' Cup Classic. Who? Okay, so I did not go with a bomb in here, but I think you did. I did, Brian. I'm going with a bomb. This is our long shot show. You know, when for me, when we're picking these long shots, um, I guess ultimately we're hoping that one of them wins the races that we're picking. However, these long shots, I think, are just as important when you're looking for trifectas or even exactas in the big fields of the Breeders' Cup where there can be some really huge payoffs. Anyway, I'm going with Clapton here. I will admit that Clapton is trained by my friend, Chad Summers, who got this horse into his barn just a couple races ago and won a big one in Kentucky when he was first in the Luce, Luce, Lucas Classic, and he is very eager for this horse to get into the field. Okay, well... I, I, I'm not with you on that one, but I think you'll get some good odds and coming off a nice race. I went a different way. This is not one of my bombs, but when I'm looking at the uh, Breeders' Cup Classic odds, Matt, I, I think the favorites are going to be Archangelo followed by Arabian Night. A, and then I think the, the Japanese Dubai World Cup winner is going to get that. I think Go Rocket Ride is going to get that. I think White of Barrios a likely fifth choice or so in here. I'm looking for eight, nine to one. And the thing about White Abaro, I talked a little bit about uh, last week. I, I think he's turned the corner. I mean, he was a grade one winner early in his career. He's always been a nice horse, but I think he turned that corner. Older horses can go one of two ways as they get older, either get better with maturity or get worse after so many races on the track. I think White Abaro is one of, one of those ones under Rick Dutro's watch who's getting better bottom line for me eight nine to one if he runs back to the whitney i think he wins this race so he's my breeders cup classic long shot all right matt next on the list i think we're going to go to the uh the fair sex if you will we're going to do distaff why don't you tell me who your long shot is in the breeders cup distaff my long shot is my top pick from last week um with uh with Claire Air. Um, we talked about it last week that she is going to get a very, very ideal pace scenario in the disc staff with so many of the top horses uh, who are in very good form recently on paper are horses that like to be on the lead or near the lead. And Clarier is coming in off of a couple of non victories um, and those two things combined are going to give, in my opinion, some very, very favorable odds on a veteran mare who was quite capable of winning this race. Yeah, she is quite capable of winning this race. And kind of what I said about the odds with White of Barrio, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping you're right. I'm, uh, I'm hoping for eight or nine to one on White of Barrio. I'm hoping Clarier might be in the same neighborhood. You got idiomatic Adair Manor who will be the two favorites in the distaff. So that opens it up for everybody else as well. She's run in the last Breeders' uh, Cup distaff, the last two editions of the Breeders' Cup distaff. I like Clarier. She certainly will be on my ticket. I went for a little bit longer price here. Maybe not much longer. I'm not sure. I, I think she'll be a little bit longer. I think she'll be double digits when she faces older horses for the first time. Her name is Wet Paint. She's coming off a, a loss in the Alabama. But she's very consistent. She's already won four stakes this year for trainer Brad Cox. And this is the time of the year when three-year-olds could step up. There's been no time this year where I thought the three-year-old fillies were as good as the older fillies. But this is the time of the year where they could. And a lot about what you said, Clarier, getting a favorable pace scenario. 
I think that's true for wet paint. A good, consistent, classy rallier, maybe she'll uh, move forward at the right time for me in the distaff, Matt. All right, next on the list, Breeders' Cup turf. A rich mile and a half race on turf. Uh, Matt, you will go first again with your turf long shot. Okay, Brian, I am going to go with uh, more like Goddess, uh, um, the the American Philly, actually American Mare, going up against the boys as she did last year when she won the Joe Hirsch. She won the Joe Hirsch again this year. Last year she finished third in the turf. Yeah, maybe it wasn't one of the toughest overall versions of the turf, but she appears to be in fine form um and as an american philly will probably get some decent odds she should have decent odds even coming off that nice turf classic win which was one if not the very best performance of her career always liked her i wish her well i went with junko uh junko is a four-year-old son of intello and one of the reasons I went with Junko is the trainer, Andre Fabre, has uh, brought good horses to America for a long time. Whether he's won, I mean, he's uh, been one of the best trainers in France for years and years. We've seen him do it in the Arc and other big races in France. But when he brings horses over here, I, I got to think they have a shot. This is a horse who's been running a little bit shorter for much of his career. Uh, but last time he went longer. And he looked really good in a, in a big group three win at Duvel, Matt. Uh, that win came about three months before the Breeders' Cup. So he's coming in fresh, master trainer. I think this horse likes the distance. I got to believe Junko has a real shot in the Breeders' Cup turf. All right, next on our list, Matt, I think we're going to go sprint. You want to go first in the sprint? Okay, yep, I don't mind leading off. Uh, yeah, well, the sprint uh, has uh, changed complexion since uh, last week with the injury to uh, Echo Zulu um, uh, and her subsequent surgery. She's doing well. I hope she continues to do that. Disappointing uh, not to see her in the Breeders' Cup. Certainly one of the most dynamic horses that was going to run. So they kind of, you know, opens things up in the, in that race. I I am going to go with Steve Asmussen's another one of his horses. I'm going to go with uh, Ganae, uh in here. This is not going to be a big long shot uh, um, in the Breeders' Cup Sprint. I assume that that is the race that he will run in. Yeah, now that Echo Zulu is out, unfortunately, and of course, Matt and I are both uh, sends our, our thoughts and prayers along to all the connections and everyone that loves uh, Echo Zulu. I love Echo Zulu, so we're, we're praying. Uh, it looks like her surgery went well and that she can make a recovery. Uh, but yeah, it, it seems to make sense that Gunite now will go to the sprint, the richer race than the dirt mile. I just have a hard time believing he's a long shot. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, the, all those races against elite power, all those good races against elite power, uh, he is coming off a loss, a disappointing loss at Parks. And there are a bunch of Californians to consider. Maybe Gunite's odds will drift up a little bit higher. I certainly like the pick. I'm just, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't call him a long shot for me. And, and for that reason, I went with another horse. Speedboat Beach, Matt, is a talented horse, a lightly raced horse. And I've seen Baffert bring back these sprinters after layoffs and do really well. And the son of Byron has already done well because his first race in about 10 months was, a, I thought, a big performance in the Santa Anita Sprint Championship. That's his only race of the year. Uh, he was really game battled the whole way pretty much and just missed to Dr. Shivel, who's another one of the top candidates in here. So I think any improvement at all in Speedboat Beach, a talented returner for Bob Baffert, could have a shot to uh, upset the favorites in the Breeders' Cup sprint. I think we got the mile next, Matt. We're, uh, we're rolling along with these value plays. In the Breeders' Cup, let's talk turf. One mile on the grass at Santa Anita, the Breeders' Cup mile. Yep, the Breeders' Cup mile. I am going with uh, Casa Creed, who is certainly going to uh, 
be a good price uh, against uh, uh, other Americans and certainly the 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 overseas horses that come into this. Uh, Casa Creed, a veteran, has ridden has run in the Breeders' Cup before, and he is coming off maybe uh, maybe his best uh, year with two big wins. Last time he won the four star Dave, the grade one. And before that he won, uh, 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 also won, uh, both times. Uh, he defeated a very good American turf horse in Annapolis. Yeah. Casa Creed is going well. I always wonder with Casa Creed, if he's a little bit better in Saratoga than some other places we'll see. I'm a fan Casa Creed. Really nice horse uh, coming off of uh, wins, freshened a little bit since those Saratoga victories. I went with uh, a horse probably not a lot of people on this side of the pond know, but Kalina is a talented, talented three-year-old filly. She's a daughter of Frankel. We all know Frankel. And I think one mile is her game. Um, she's thrown in some races that will help her be a long shot. Uh, in this Breeders' Cup mile because she's thrown in some races that weren't great, but she's also thrown in some really big performances. Word is that she wants a, a, a ground that's a little bit firmer. She's usually gotten soft turf, and she did it last time in the seventh furlong Group 1 4A in which she uh, upset the field with a, with a big, impressive win. So when she's good, she's very good. If she likes a mile, she likes firm turf. She will like a mile. If she likes firm turf, like they're saying she will, and her only race on her form, she kind of did. Uh, I think Kalina, and we've seen three-year-old fillies do really well in the Breeders' Cup mile before. So I think she is a very interesting long shot in this race, Matt. All right, Matt, uh, we're going to go from the mile to the dirt mile next. We're going to switch surfaces, but keep the distance. Breeders' Cup mile, uh, dirt mile is uh, shaping up as a pretty interesting race, I think. Yeah, absolutely. And and uh, it's not hard to find some interesting long shots uh, in this race because, you know, uh, with uh, Cody's wish in there, who's going to certainly take a, a bulk of the betting money, uh, I've gone with Stage Raider based on his, his recent barn change from – Chad Brown to Chad Brown's former assistant, Cherie DeVoe. Um, since changing Barnes, um, he's run twice for DeVoe. Last time, ran a really good second in the ACAC -ac at uh, Churchill Downs, and before that was a stakes winner at Ellis Park. Yeah, Stage Raider is a horse uh, who, who's going to be big odds, and he's a, one of those horses that you see in the, the dirt mile that sometimes sneak into the exotics at big odds. Stage Raider might be on the new uh, improve, as Matt said, for that new barn. Interesting pick. Uh, Japan, Matt, I, I, I really feel like Japan might be bringing their strongest contingent yet. We've talked a little bit about Japanese horses already the last few weeks. Uh, let's start talking about Lemon Pop. Everybody after Cody's wish and then probably practical move as a clear second choice should be considered a, uh, a long shot in this field. I think he got a heavy favorite and I think he got a clear second choice. That makes pretty much everybody else in the race a long shot. And Lemon Pop does not look like a long shot on his form. Uh, really, really nice Japanese horse. He's one of the best Japanese dirt horses they have, and he specializes in this one mile distance. He, uh, he he sprinted over in Dubai and got beat uh, pretty well over there, but I, I think he's better going a mile. He had a return race recently, and he absolutely won for fun. I think Lemon Pop is one of many Japanese horses who have a real shot to uh, make some noise on Breeders' Cup uh, weekend. Matt, we're going to go back to the turf. And we got the Philly and Mare Turf next. Who's your long shot? My long shot is a bring back from last week uh, and was my top pick in this race. That was Jackie O from the barn of Aiden O'Brien, who last time out was a good second in the Prix de la Opera at Longchamp. 
Yeah, Jackie O, uh, your top pick. That's your second top pick, also a long shot. I, I've had one with White of Barrio. Jackie O, certainly a horse who uh, could pop up for trainer Aiden O'Brien. Um, I'm of the opinion that Didia has just been too good to get as little attention as she has, Matt. Didia has, what has she done wrong? If you look at her last nine turf races, she's won eight of them. And she was second in the other. And the other came when they absolutely dawdled on the on the front end in the grade one New York uh, at Belmont Park. Uh, that's her only loss in nine uh, her last nine turf races. Most of them now, after some big wins in South America, have come in America. And uh, she's looking like a serious grass horse uh, who has a win over the track. She won the Rodeo Drive nicely at Santa Anita, the same distance here. There's some Europeans, and I think the Europeans will be tough, and, and maybe Jackie O is part of that group. But Didia, again, she's she's too good to ignore, and, and I think she will, once again, be largely ignored in this uh, strong Philly and Mare turf race. Now, we're going to stick with the Phillies and Mares, but we're going to go from a mile and a quarter on the grass in the Philly and Mare Turf, to seven furlongs. Uh, one furlong longer than the Breeders' Cup sprint is the Philly and Mare sprint. Seven furlongs on the dirt. Who you got? Hey, I've got uh, – uh, I'm going with veteran trainer John Sadler, um, who is a Breeders' Cup uh, winner uh, now. I'm going with Kirsten Bosch. I'm going with uh, her because – she is a recent winner of a grade three sprint at Santa Anita. She has a closing running style, which generally is preferred in that seven furlong race. Yeah, I, I think this is a good pick to possibly upset and win. I think this is also a really good pick to get into the exotics if you're betting exactus, trifectas, superfectas, and such. Kirsten Bosch makes a heck of a lot of sense to me. This is a filly who's bounced back and forth between middle distance and sprints. I really, for a while, have preferred her sprinting. Her last two are probably her two best races yet, where she rallied in sprints. Now, as you mentioned, she gets kind of an ideal distance for a, for a rallying sprinter, seven furlongs. She also should have a fast pace in this filly and mare sprint. Kirsten Bosch, uh, it is a daughter of Midnight Loot, Matt, and we remember how much success that he had, her sire had, in rolling down the lane, rallying in these sprint races. Kirsten Bosch is no Midnight Loot, but on the other hand, she's going to come running in this sprint, and I think she'll get a piece or more. So we agree on our long shot in the Philly and Mare sprint. Eight races down, Matt. We uh, we only have one more race on Saturday. We did Saturday first again, and and that is the uh, the shortest race of the bunch. They're going to blitz five furlongs on the turf in the turf sprint. Um, lots of potential winners in here. Let's try to find one that has some odds. All right, Brian. I am going to go with uh, trainer Richard Mandela. I remember that Breeders' Cup when he won a handful. Of Breeder Cup, Breeders Cup races on um, one weekend. I am going with uh, Lane Way, the recent winner of the uh, Eddie D Grade Two. Um, Lane Way has a fantastic record uh, at uh, Santa Anita uh, with four wins and four seconds from nine starts. The Eddie D has produced uh, Breeders Cup winners in the past. Yeah, yeah, I got another pick that makes sense to me. Lane Way uh, is uh, looking good of late, coming off a nice win over the San Anita turf. That's Matt's pick for a long shot. My pick is Cogburn. Cogburn is a horse I've kind of, uh, you know, followed his entire career. He, he was a nice sprinter on dirt, maybe not a, a star, uh, not a grade uh, one winner by any stretch, but he was a nice sprinter on dirt. I, I think he's better on grass, and I think that's he's shown that he's better on grass uh, this year for trainer Steve Asmussen. Asmussen knows how to win big races. This is a son of not this time, one of the best young sires 
in the country. And I'm, I'm actually a little excited to see what not this time a son of Giants Causeway, his offspring can do on turf. Uh, they've been doing so well on dirt. I haven't seen a ton of not this time's run on the grass. But Cockburn has moved up. He's won three out of four. Uh, unlike on dirt, where he usually showed a lot of early speed, Cockburn's been rallying. I can forgive his last loss. He was narrowly beaten. It's a pretty tough trip in a different kind of race at Kentucky Downs. He won his other three turf sprints. I think he likes five furlongs, and I, I like to see a horse rally in this uh, fur will fly. If there's no super superstars on the lead early, they can rally in the five furlong turf sprint, and Cogburn makes a lot of sense to me as a sprint uh, turf sprinter. Now we go to the two-year-olds, Matt. This is Friday, of course, November 4th. Uh, did I get that day right? Is it November 4th or November 3rd? It's Friday. Third, I it's think. the yeah, it's the juveniles, and we're going to start with the juvenile, uh, which is, of course, uh, a race that uh, is a uh, prelude to all the fun we have next year on the Kentucky Derby Trail, Matt. Let's talk about our long shot possibilities in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Hey, Brian, I feel like the juvenile this year is, all kind of, is a wide open race. Uh, um, even though I think Bob Baffert's Prince of Monaco is going to be a pretty heavy favorite. And then you got another, uh, another Baffert in there that, uh, you know, is, is coming off of victory. So I think those Baffert horses are going to take up a, a big part of the, of the, of the wind pool and, and, and exotics. I am going to go with general partner for Chad Brown as a long shot pick general partner had a nice maiden victory for Chad in his second start and then came back and ran a good second in the Champagne Stakes. Hey, nobody's won more Breeders' Cup races in a relatively short amount of time than Chad Brown. Yeah, it, an interesting pick there, Matt. I, I still don't know what to make of those sloppy uh, races, uh, the Frisette and, and the uh, Champagne. Uh, you like them more than I do at this point. Uh, but General Partner is a horse who, who could be moving forward, and he did did make a move on a sloppy track. So a horse who uh, could pop up. Um, I'm liking Vino Rosso. I, I liked Vino Rosso, of course, as a racehorse. And I like, uh, I like the look of these Vino Rossos so far uh, this year in his first crop. Uh, there's a couple pointing to the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, and I think both are interesting horses. Yeah, I, I, I'm with you. I, I think uh, Prince of Monaco and Muth will be the top two favorites, and then you're going to get odds on everyone else. And I, I think we picked a couple horses here who certainly should be double digits. The Wine Steward is a New York bred for trainer Mike Maker. I'm used to liking Mike Maker at 12 furlongs on the grass, so it's nice to have him see a potential Kentucky Derby Trail horse here in the Wine Steward. But I, I've liked everything I've seen from the Wine Steward because – he was sprinting his first uh, three races, and he won them all, and he's bred to run longer. Uh, he finally got two turns last time in the grade one Breeders' Futurity at Keeneland. Uh, locked beat him, but the wine steward coming out of those just those sprints was really game down the stretch. Uh, he has the ability to pass horses. He has the ability to stay pretty close. The wine steward is a horse I like. I, there, there's nothing not to like about the wine steward for me. Double digits, yes, please, in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Matt, we're going to stick with the dirt races on Friday, and we're going to go to the Phillies now before we get three turf races for the Juvenile. Who is your long shot pick in the Juvenile Phillies? I think I've got a long shot in here, Brian. I think I've got a long shot that's undefeated. Two for two um, for trainer Bill Mott. Trainer Bill Mott, who I think is – just a Breeders' Cup victory or two away from winning the Eclipse Award as the top trainer this year, uh, 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 you know, breaking the streak of, you know, Pletcher's and Chad Brown's and Cox winning that award. Um, last time, just FYI, uh, was a winner of the Frisette. Yes, on that sloppy track. Uh, but Mott's been uh, doing things really well this year. Mott has been doing very well, and there's nothing wrong. Just FYI has done nothing wrong in two career starts. We'll see. Uh, coming off that sloppy win in the first set. 
I, on the other hand, went with a long shot who hasn't won a race yet, Matt. She's she's 0 for 2. <laughs> And for that reason, I think she'll be probably an even bigger long shot than your long shot. But uh, Scalable interests me uh, in, in a lot of ways. Scalable comes from the uh, Rapoli barn, Todd Pletcher. Uh, Pletcher certainly won this race before, as he's won every big juvenile or juvenile Philly race uh, before. And uh, I like what I've seen in her two losses. Uh, yeah, it's tough to, to become a winner of a Breeders' Cup race as a maiden, but it's been done, and it's been done out west uh, not that long ago. Uh, I think Scalable has a shot to do it here. Uh, she showed interest with a wide trip when uh, when beaten in her debut at Saratoga Sprinting. Then she came back, and uh, Pletcher must like her, Matt. Pletcher put her in a, a pretty big prep for the Breeders' Cup, the Chandelier out there at Santa Anita, and I thought, again, she ran a very good race, a better race, an improved race, going two turns over the track. Uh, the winner that day got out there and went all the way around in moderate fractions. But Scalable was the one rallying best of the rest. She was uh, uh, second, beat, not, not beaten by all that much. It, it, it looks like she's a filly who should improve off that effort, her second lifetime race and her first time around two turns. So for me, Scalable, the maiden is my Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies long shot. Matt, we're going to hit the turf next, and let's talk uh, Let's talk the males. Let's talk the boys with the Juvenile Turf, which is one mile and will feature plenty of international invaders. Okay, Brian, I am going with, in the Juvenile Turf, my boy Prince, trained by Mark Cassie. It, it took Cassie a little a pretty long time before he got a Breeders' Cup victory, but since he's done that, he's he's won a handful of them. This is a horse that uh, has been running in Cassie's division up at Woodbine, beginning his career on the artificial surface there, where he had some huge victories, Brian, a six-length maiden special weight, a 14-length stakes victory, and then Cassie made the move onto the grass where he ran a nice second in the grade one summer stakes, and uh, I think we're going to get a big price for a horse that's run a lot of good races. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think you're right, Matt. I think he'll have uh, nice odds in the juvenile turf. Cassie, uh, Cassie's proven good in these big races like the Breeders' Cup and, and the Triple Crown in recent years. And my boy Prince certainly has a shot. I went with Aiden O'Brien again, uh, which has been a little bit of a refrain for me the last two weeks. I think Aiden O'Brien is coming with a big barn and uh, Justify has uh, also... Uh, taken off on both sides of the pond as a young sire. Capulet is the horse's name, a son of Justify for Aiden O'Brien. He's only run three times, but they've all been good. And uh, after winning on a artificial uh, surface in his debut, this horse has uh, run in two straight great uh, group two races over in Europe at one mile and performed very well in both against the top, uh, some of the top two-year-olds in Europe. O'Brien does well bringing horses over. Capulet probably will be slightly ignored because of other international horses as well as North Americans. Capulet will be my long shot in the juvenile turf. We're going to jump right from the juvenile turf at a mile on the grass to the juvenile turf fillies at a mile on the grass mat. Another maybe difficult race to, to handicap. There should see, We should see some bombs in, in races like these where it's full fields, wide open races. Whether they win it or whether they get any exotics, we should see some bombs in there. Who do you got in this race? Brian, I'm going with one of those Euro European trainers that has lots of experience bringing horses over to America for the Breeders' Cup. My pick is Carla's Way, who is a recent Group 2 winner at Newmarket. Yeah, that, that win in Newmarket kind of points her out, Matt, as a, a very nice filly. It'll be interesting to see what odds you'll get. Uh, I don't think she'll necessarily be one of the favorites, but uh, certainly one that you can't ignore in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies Turf. Mine is, a, I, I think, will be a big bomb. Her name is Brock Nardini. Brock Nardini is a daughter of Palace Malice. Everyone knows I was a Palace Malice fan. I'm also a big fan of trainer George Weaver, 
especially on the grass. And I think Brock Nardini will be a bomb because she went up to Canada in her second career race and just had all kinds of trouble. And she did, she was not persevered with. She finished 13th in the, in the Palma up there. And how could I possibly bet on a horse who finished 13th two starts back? Well, she's a two year old, a uh, lightly raised two year old filly. She's impressively won before that race and impressively won after that race, both on turf. Uh, George Weaver is not going to send a horse to the Breeders' Cup that doesn't have a shot. And I think Brock Nardini's maiden win at Saratoga and her stakes win last time at Laurel are good enough to, for me to believe that the, the Canadian race is a complete draw a line through it. So Brock Nardini for trainer George Weaver will be my juvenile Phillies turf long shot. Matt, we're down to one race. It's the juvenile turf sprint, maybe the hardest race of all 14 to handicap to pick a winner. But we're going to pick not only a winner, we're going to pick a long shot winner, Matt. Go get it. Absolutely. And and it looks like only uh, one of a couple of races where we agree on our long shot. Um, that is committee of one from the barn of Steve Asmussen. I don't usually, you know, uh, prefer to go with Asmussen on the turf. He has had so much of his success on the dirt, but this one ran a really big race at Keeneland uh, in the Indian summer just recently and is uh, by the new sire, Mendelssohn. Yeah, a, a son of Mendelssohn. Uh, it's the second race we agree on. Committee of one to me is, is he's moving in the right direction. I don't know if he has the turn of foot of some, but uh, Committee of One looks like he's becoming a really nice turf sprinter. Maybe some of the same things I said about Cogburn. This horse has run at three different tracks already, Ellis Park, Kentucky Downs, and Keeneland. He's gotten better with each start. Clearly, he likes sprinting on the grass. I like Asmussen in big sprint races, even if it is grass. So I'm with you, Matt. Committee of One will be my turf sprint, juvenile turf sprint long shot as well. 14 races, 14 long shots. 28 long shots uh, if you count both of us, but only 26 because we did have agreements. Maybe Kirsten Bosch and Committee of One are, are two horses that people are going to take away as as we both like as a long shot. So they got to put a few dollars on them. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to give you, again, whether it's win or in the exotics, uh, some real nice prices for you to win some money in the Breeders' Cup. Let me get a parting shot from you, my friend. Yeah, and in the Breeders' Cup, Brian, I like to uh... – I like to play long shot horses in the trifecta. I like to play them in the pick threes also, uh, uh, taking a shot, getting some big prices. And, of course, stay with us on Horse Center, Horse Center because we'll have more about those kind of wagers uh, in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, just over two weeks away, Matt. Uh, thank you for everybody for watching and 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 listen to what Matt said. Um, in, in the races that are more wide open, those are the races where long shots have a real opportunity to win. And those are the races you put them into those uh, multi-race pick three, pick four, pick five tickets. And that could make your ticket a big one. Thanks for watching. If you haven't yet subscribed to our uh, YouTube channel here at Horse Racing Nation, Turn on those notifications. Leave us comments. We're excited for the Breeders' Cup just over two weeks away. We'll be talking about it more right here next week on Horse Center. We'll see you then.